<laughs> oh, Dennis, what are, what are you expecting when it comes to uh, the, the focus on what we call the black agenda, knowing that Biden had made such high promises at the outset and had the support of black voters that carried him to victory? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, you're talking more than 70 percent approval rating among African-Americans. But it's a misnomer to call it a black agenda because many of the issues that are on the table, you know, are, are those issues that are near and dear to those with modest means. Yes, we want health care. With 73 percent of african Americans, 73,000 African-Americans who lost their lives to COVID, that is central. But also with the economy, a shifting and unstable economy and with inflation running rampant, this is a central core value that he's got to discuss, particularly when you look at energy, which is 11 percent of the budget, the family budget, again, of those of modest means. So all the issues on the table. Yes, affordable housing is crucial. When you take a look at the average mortgage today, 435,000, and you pit that up against the average salary, not only of African Americans, but people of color, every single issue is on the table. And his number one job tonight, when he hits that last page and that last paragraph and that last sentence, he's got to build momentum. Why? Because momentum begins with the next step. And when you have the uh, midterms coming up in the latter part of this year and the early fall, this is central to his next agenda. Yeah, and one of the points I was going to make is that we uh, have received some excerpts of what he's going to talk about tonight. The president basically states, you know, he will focus on Ukraine, but he will also focus on his domestic agenda. And he stated this, Dennis, we have a choice. One way to fight inflation is to drive down wages and make Americans poorer. I have a better plan to fight inflation. Going into that plan in terms of lowering the cost for the average American, that's going to impact in a, a positive way the black community. Talk to us about that from your perspective as someone who's been a top motivational speaker, a professor, and someone who's been concerned about lifting all boats and all people so that all Americans rise. Well, exactly. You hit the proverbial nail on the head when you use the word choice. Now, there are 50 million choices that we can make on a daily basis, 99.9% .9 of them we don't have to address. But there are two choices that you have to look at as soon as your feet hit the cold ground in the morning. Number one, you can accept the circumstances as they are, or number two, you can take the responsibility to change them. That's what the Biden and the Harris ticket, at least hopefully, and again, I'm going back to those with modest means are talking about. Yes, you hit on the area. Yes, I am a college professor. And as a matter of fact, I had class today. I stand before kids every Tuesday and Thursday, number one. More than 50% of the students that I stand before on HBCU come from uh, our first generation kids. And not only that, but 40% of my students come from households in which the parents can't even give them a dollar towards their education. Now, is this something that is just peculiar or innate with the black community? No, not at all. If Biden wants to go ahead and, and really light a charge under the economy, I'm not telling him or I'm not suggesting that he would, you know, reduce student loan debt. All I'm saying is get the, you know, the interest rate under control because that would have, uh, I mean, that would have a wellspring of activity in the economy. But there are a number of issues also that come out of that, Malou. Uh, minimum wage is critical. Uh, well-paying jobs, equal compensation with women. I mean, let's face it, this is National Women Month, all right? And still, here we are in 2022. There's not a state in the nation that'll pay women on par what they will pay men, particularly white males. Now, ordinarily, that would not be an issue with me until the Lord gave me three daughters and two granddaughters, and I hope that they win. I mean, for white women, for every dollar that a white male earns, a white woman is anywhere between 82 and 88 cents. But for black females, it's even less than that, 68 to 75 percent. Biden knows and Harris knows if you would pay, if you would take everything that I just discussed, affordable housing, reduced principal on student loan debts, well-paying jobs, and pay women on 
par what you would pay a male, you would end poverty overnight. Well, Dennis, as you mentioned, black women have the most education out of anybody in this country, exactly. also the highest amount of student loan debt, uh, and it starts even when children are young. Uh, the Biden administration talking about how they lifted 66 percent of children out of poverty with the advanced child tax credit. He's expected to tout that today, yet they canceled that credit. Right. So giving the money back to people, giving the money back to black families is an easy solution to so many of the problems you mentioned. Author and professor Dennis Kimbo, thank you for joining us tonight.